Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Stem and Leaf Plots, Part 1. It's actually a fun little lesson, very, very simple to understand, and it's just a different way of writing down data that helps us visualize what the data actually looks like, the distribution of the data, a little bit more clearly than just writing a list of numbers. It's actually really simple, and it's easier to describe with an example. Let's say I give you the data uh, 15, and then 11, and then 54, and then 32, and then 45, and then 26, and then 33. I'll continue on to the next line, uh, 49, and then 59. So here's all of my data. Now when I look at this data, it's difficult to really see what's happening. I, I can plot it, I can do a box and whisker plot to kind of help me visualize what it looks like, but we're gonna learn something called stem and leaf. So you need to think about stem and leaf being like a little tree. There's like a trunk of a tree, which is kind of the stem, uh, and then you have leaves that kind of come off in different directions. So we have kind of the trunk and then the, the leaves that kind of come off there. So we're gonna make a little table and it's called a stem and leaf table. So here is the stem and then over here we'll put leaves, right? Very simple. So we're just gonna draw a little table like this and usually you put like a line between them, something like this. So here is literally all you do. 15 is the first value in our data set. So you take a look at the first digit uh, there and the stem in this first digit, uh, the first digit here is a one. So it goes under the stem column. So put a little one right here. And then the second digit is a five. So a five goes right here. Now I know this makes absolutely no sense right now, but you read, you read it just like you read a number. You put the stem with the leaf. So the one and the five together make 15. Let's continue and I think you'll understand. The next number that we have, I'll put a little dot since we've completed that, is 11. So the first digit is a one and the second digit is also a one. So the stem, the very first digit is already on the board. So we just go to the leaf and put another one here, right? So you read, this, you read this as two data points. One five makes 15 and one one makes 11. All right, now I want to skip into my data points to look for something that starts with a two, which is right there. So in this case, the first digit is a two. So the stem is a two and the next digit is a six. So a six goes over here. So you read this as 26. So you see the stem is here and then the second digit are the leaves and you just kind of write them out like this. All right, um, let's find another, something else that starts with a three here. So we can make another stem here. We have 32, the stem is a three and the leaf is a two. You read this as 32, all right? And then I guess we can just continue filling it out here. We have 33 here. So the stem is three, it's already on the board and we have 33, so we put a, a, another three right there. And then we have uh, 40, let's do 45. The stem is four, the first digit, and the next digit is a five, so you read it as 45, like this. Now, let's go over here to 49. The stem is four, and we have a nine for 49, so you have 49 like this. And then finally, have 54. The stem is four, and the leaf, I'm sorry, the stem is five, and the leaf is four. So five, and then a four is 54 right there. And then, let's see, we already did 49, so we'll put a dot there. And then we have 59, stem is five, we have to put a nine right here. So let me double check myself. We have one and then one, uh, five comma one, two and then six, three and then two, three, and then four and then five, nine, and five and four, nine. Now this table is complete. The, the commas that you see here to separate the digits, most people put those commas, but some people don't. So instead of seeing commas here, you might just see the numbers spaced apart. So why do we do this? Because it shows you at a glance that we have 15 and then 11, and then we have 26, and then 32 and 33, and then 45 and 49, and then 54 and 59. And it's all arranged in a table and it's a little bit easier to get a lay of the land of what your data is telling you than to look at all of these raw numbers here. Because it tells you two things. The main thing it tells you is that you don't have very much clumping in this data. In other words, if I had a lot of data points that were all between you know, uh, uh, 11 and 19, let's say, then I would have lots of digits here. It would have with lots and lots of leaves. Like if I had tons of numbers, like 14, 12, 11, 19, 19, 22, and so, and so on, then I would have a bunch of listing right here, and then I would be able to see immediately, oh, I have a lot of clumping of my data over between 11 and 20, right? Or if I had lots of data that were 
for, between 40 and 49, then I would have lots of digits right here and I would be able to see very easily, oh, I have a lot of clumping going on in the 40s. But when I look at this data, I know I only have one point here, but really I have two points in this range from 11 to, to 19. I have two points in this range from 31 or 30 to 39. I have two points from 40 to 49, two points from 50 to 59, and yeah, there's only one point here, but more or less, on average, the data is pretty, pretty spread out. There's an equal number of points in each grouping of 10, from 11 to, you know, or 10 to 19, and from 20 to 29, and things like this. Everything is nice and spread out. I don't have any clumping that's happening, really. And so that's really what it's for. It's to be able to visualize the numbers a little bit easier than just looking at all the, all the raw numbers here. You can see where the groupings lie. So let's do another one. Here we have our data. It's 15, 32, 35, 22, 14, uh, 29, and 34. So stem and leaf. So let's go ahead and make a table. We have a stem table and then a leaf table, right? You just put a little line through it like this and so on. So let's go find, just to, for the purpose of writing our table, we'll find the, we'll put the 15 in there first. It's one five, so the stem is a one and a five is the leaf, so we've covered that one. So let's go find our next value in that range, 14. One four means I have to put a four here. So we read this as 15 and also 14. So that takes care of that. Now in the 20s, we have 22, so the stem is two and the leaf is two. And then we have 29, so the stem is two and the leaf is nine. So you read this as 22 and 29. All right, now in the 30s, we have 32. The stem is three, the leaf is two. We have 35, but we also have 34 right here. So we generally want to put the numbers in order if we can. So we'll put 34 right here, and then we'll round it out with 35 right here. So we have uh, one and then five, four. Really, it's better if you just put this as a, in, in ascending order with a four here and then a five right here. In general is what you're shooting for. One, four, five. 2, 2, 9, and then 3, 2, 4, 5. So if they're out of order as far as like not ascending, it's not the end of the world. It still shows all the data, but really to do the proper stem and leaf, you should try to get them in order. And what it tells you is that between uh, 10 going up to 29 here, we have pretty even amounts of data points, but we have a little more clumping in the 30s. So it's easier to look at this chart and see that you have more clumping, more data points in the 30s than it is to look here but you also have to remember that there's only, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven data points here. So it's not so hard either way. But if I had 100 data points, it would be really hard to look at a list of numbers and see what it was telling you. The table would be vastly superior in showing you the breakdown and the distribution of the different numbers that you have. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Here is our data set. We have 62. We have 37. 71, 53, 49, uh, 78, uh, 63, we'll start over here, 38, uh, 56, and 48. So it's going to be easier if you just try to do these in order. Stem, make a little table here, leaf. Try to go in order if you can. Sometimes it's a little hard to do when you have a lot of data points and you might go out of order a little bit, but try to look at something in the teens, you know, uh, uh, 10 to 19, there's nothing here. Try to look for something in the 20s. There's nothing here in the 20s. Then you try to look for something in the 30s. So we have a 37, a 38, and that's actually it, a 37 and a 38. So the stem is a three and the leaf is seven, so that's 37. We have 38, so we have to put an eight here, 37, 38. Now let's look in the 40s. We have a 49, and then we have a 48. So we'll put the 48 first, and that's this one, and then the 49 will be a common nine, 48, 49. We've covered those two. Now let's look in the 50s. We have a 53, and we have a 56. So 53 is gonna come first, 53, right there, and then 56 will come next. So we have a three and a six there, 53, 56. Now in the 60s, we have a 62 and a 63, so 62 will come first. And then we have a 63 right here, so that one will come next. And then in the 70s, we have 71 and 78. So we have a seven for the stem, a one and comma eight, so that's 71 and 78. Now what does this tell you? It tells me at a glance, 
without having to look through a whole list of numbers just in a row. It tells me that I have nothing less than 30 in this list. Anything in the 20s, the teens, or the single digit, I don't have any data at all. And I don't have anything high in, in the 80s or above. And then in, in between the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, the data is very evenly distributed. Right? It's very useful to know that in the range of the data I have, it's very evenly distributed. What if I had lots and lots of data points in the 70s, then this leaf chart would go off to the right with lots and lots and lots of numbers, and I could see immediately, without pouring through pages of numbers, that I have lots of data in the 70s. And so it's very, very useful to look and see the distribution of the data that you have. All right, we'll call, uh, we'll do one more and then we'll call it a day here. Our next set of numbers is 49, and then 39, and then 35, and then 26, and then 28, and then 38, and then 50. All right, so I have a stem, and then a leaf. All right, so just draw your little table here, and you look and see, do I have anything in the, in the single digits? No. Do I have anything in the teens? No. Do I have anything in the 20s? Well, I have a 26 and a 28. So I'll put the 26 first, and 28 will go with a comma 8. 26, 28. Next, look in the 30s. Do I have anything in the 30s? 39, 35, and 38. 35 is going to come first, right? And then followed by, I have a 38 right there, and then I have a 39 right there, like that. And then I look in the 40s. I have only one number in the 40s, it's a 49, so that gets written like that. And then I have only one number in the 50s, which is 50, so I'll put a 50 like this. So I can see at a glance, without doing anything else, that most of my data is clumped in the 20s and 30s. So I can kind of look at the raw data and see that, but we're not computers, you know? We don't look at num strings of numbers and really in see what they all mean as, as a group, right? But when I show you a picture of the data, you can see I just don't have much in the 40s or the 50s, but I have lots of clumping in the 30s and also some in the 20s. So depending on what you're talking about, you would know immediately that most of your data is in the 20s and 30s. So that's really what a, a stem and leaf plot is for, is to help us visualize the distribution of the numbers. Are they mostly on the lower end of my data? Are they mostly clumped on the higher end? Or are they like some of these others where they're evenly distributed throughout the range of the data I have. So I'd like you to try these yourself. They're very simple, they're kind of fun. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll do a little more with stem and leaf plots.